Hey guys, and welcome back to the DIY HVAC Guy YouTube channel. In today's video, we're gonna be showing you how to install this beautiful, rude, two and a half ton air conditioner. So we're gonna be replacing the condensing unit as well as the indoor evaporator coil. So this should be a pretty basic install. This is an old R22 system. I think it's a train a condenser and coil. And we're gonna be replacing it with a 16 sear rude condenser and a, a coil with a built-in TXV. So what we're gonna do to start with is we're gonna pump all the refrigerant into this condenser, being as the compressor is still working in the system. So we'll walk you through how easy that is to do. So what we're gonna do first is take these caps off. So this bottom one and this one up here on the top. Okay, so this is a train system, so it's a little bit different. The suction line has a thing where you can just put a crescent wrench on. But for the high side, you'll notice that it has an Allen key. So we're gonna take our Allen key and we're gonna completely close off the high side or the 3 8 smaller line. So we're just gonna crank this down until it seats. All right, so just give that a little tighten and then that should be good. And then this one's gonna be really easy. All we're gonna do is once we have our system pumped down, we're just gonna take a crescent wrench and this should just turn a quarter turn and that will completely close off this one. Now, as far as pumping this down, there's two methods. We can hold the contactor in manually and pump this system down. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull the disconnect here. We're gonna turn the thermostat on so it's calling for cooling. And then when we're ready to pump the system down, we'll put in our disconnect. And then once we have this refrigerant locked into the system, we'll go ahead and pull that disconnect back out. All right, so next we're gonna hook our gauges up. So these are the low loss fittings that I recommend. Um, I have these on our Amazon store. All right, so we're gonna turn our manifold on and we'll see our pressures here. What we're gonna pay attention to is the low side pressure. So we're gonna go ahead and turn the thermostat on, put our disconnect in and we'll watch this pressure drop. All right, so the system is on at the thermostat. We're calling for cooling. So we can see our pressures are already dropping. Once these get to about zero, we are going to crank this one 90 degrees and close it off. I'm gonna let it go a little bit past zero, just so we don't have any residual stuff in the line. All right, go ahead and close it. All right, so that's perfectly perpendicular. We're gonna pull the disconnect out now. And hopefully if it's closed, this will not rise. So I think we're good. All right, perfect. So we can disconnect our gauges and then uh, throw these caps back on and we're good to cut the lines. So now that our power is off and our refrigerant is contained to this unit, we're just gonna verify that we don't have any power so we're just gonna check both sides of our contactor. Zero volts. And zero volts. So we're good to go ahead and disconnect our main electrical. We'll um, turn the thermostat off and then we can disconnect our uh, thermostat wiring here. And then this unit will be completely free. So here's our air conditioner and furnace. The coil is behind this. So we're gonna have Terry remove this and the coil, we're good to go ahead and cut this. We'll put our filter dryer in here and all of this is gonna be replaced. So we're gonna take off all this insulation, this bulb, and we'll cut our line there. All right, so our coil has been removed here. We've marked the new, or measured the new coil, so it's 20 inches high. We're gonna cut it a little bit higher. We're gonna cut this to make it to where our transition won't actually need to be like custom built. So that's gonna save some time. So once we get this cut out, we'll show you what we got. So here's our new coil. This is a multi-position coil. So if you wanted to, you could actually mount it this way or this way. As you can see, there's a pan on the side and there's also a pan down there at the bottom. So all of the rude coils have a built-in TXB, which I love. And all you have to do is make your connections and then connect your bulb. And that's it. 
Another feature is the metal plates on the bottom. Some people say you're not supposed to put this directly above the furnace, but that's not true at all. Um, these are designed to where they can take the heat in the summer, uh, winter months and uh, no problems will arise from that. So I'll show you once we got this set in place, how it looks. All right, so our disconnect is completely wired in. So these are our two line wires that come in from the building. And then these are our two load wires that go to the disconnect that will connect to the unit. And of course we have our two ground wires. So being as this is completely done, we can go ahead and pop this guy in like that beautiful we got everything caulked around here so it's nice and sealed up so next what we're gonna do is push our unit up and we'll make our refrigerant connections all right so we got our lines fitted here everything looks really good we're going to be using stay bright 8 on this job um, if you're curious where you can find this you can go to our Amazon store in the video description. Just click my favorite HVAC tools and you'll find this combo there. Now, a couple of things that make this awesome is that one, you don't have to have a nitrogen flow going through the lines because this does not get nearly as hot as brazing and it doesn't create any soot in the lines. And second, as we don't have a bunch of heat, we don't even have to wrap these. You can if you want to, but I've done tons of jobs without wrapping them and you're in and out so fast that it's um, not really necessary. And the other beauty is that you don't have to have um, oxyacetylene torches. You can use map gas and this will work just fine. You can pick these up at Home Depot or you can find this combo in our Amazon store as well. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna apply our flux. So we're just gonna pull each fitting out. We're just gonna flux the male end, slide it back in, wipe the excess off, and then we can start brazing. And these have already been scotch brighted as you can see they're nice and clean but you definitely want to do that before you attach these as well all right so we're ready to solder so we'll get our torch lit and a couple of things here is with this you want to unspool it and you want to put a hook on it and you want to use about the diameter of what this bend is. So if we loop this all the way around, that's about how much solder we want to use for this joint. And it also makes it easier to start with the bottom and then do the top. Now you'll notice that as I do the bottom, I'm going to be heating the top where I want that solder to go. So I'm going to go like this and then we'll heat the bottom and we'll work on the top and have the reverse effect. That's literally all you need. As you can see, we used just the amount that we had rationed out. Now for the 3 8 obviously we're not gonna use all of this. Uh, just the 3 8 does not take much at all. All right, so as you can see our joints nice and good so for this one we ended up doing an RLS fitting these have come in handy uh, a lot of times when I don't have certain fittings on my truck I always have various things that I can use so um, but as long as you have couplers you can do the stay bright 8 method through the whole system no problem so we're gonna get this uh, suction side insulated with our nice white insulation get our electrical hooked up and this will be completely done out here all right, so everything is insulated. Our box is done. Conduit and thermostat wiring is done. Probably put one more zip tie there just so it looks real nice. Uh, we're just gonna tuck these inside here and we're good to go on our uh, cover here. And the rest of this video will be inside until we're ready for our pressure test. So in here, we've got our coil set in place. Um, we're basically just going to leave this and we're gonna tape it um, I don't see any issues with this. We're gonna put some S-clip here. 
build this piece, we're gonna bend an inch and slide it into the S here and get this all sealed up and then we can do our refrigerant lines. All right, so here's where we're at on our coil. So we got our transition done up. Everything is sealed completely top and bottom. We have our drain set up. It's just a hose that runs down to our condensate pump and we can work on our refrigeration lines. And then once we have those, we'll just reattach our exhaust, do our pressure test and vacuum, and we'll be ready to let the refrigerant in. So we're just gonna build a piece from here with an elbow there. And then for our liquid line, we'll come up and we'll have our filter dryer right here. All right, so we ended up using some RLS fittings on this job, um, and then we just stabrighted the bottom here. So this is ready for the pressure test. Terry here is gonna put our bulb on right here, and then uh, we're gonna insulate the suction line all the way up. And by that time, our pressure test should be good, and we'll be ready to pull a vacuum. All right, so while Terry is working in there, we're gonna go ahead and do our pressure test. So to start with, we're gonna install our Schrader core removal tool on our low side. So we're just gonna take this part of it off. We're gonna take the valve core out right here. And we're just gonna set this on top of the unit. Then we're going to thread on our core removal tool. Just like that. I'm gonna hook up our low side hose to the tool. Make sure that's open. Our nitrogen is open, got plenty of pressure. First, we're gonna go to about 50, and we're just gonna make sure that there's no major leaks. So we're at about 60 PSI. We're gonna give that about five minutes, make sure it doesn't drop, and then we'll go up to our 350 PSI. All right, so our pressure is holding, so we're just gonna go ahead and bump it up to 350. So we're gonna let our pressure stabilize. Typically, when you cut the nitrogen off at the manifold, um, your pressures will drop maybe a couple PSI. Um, and then after they've stabilized, because heat and pressure are related, we're going to do our tightness test uh, right here and this auto figures if your pressures are good you can't just depend on the pressure itself if the temperature is rising and lowering and fluctuating the pressure will also be affected so you can't just go off of this so that's the purpose of the tightness test so the way that it works is you take your suction side where you're feeding in the nitrogen and we're going to take a measurement and it uses that temperature to determine if your tightness test has passed or failed. So we're gonna clamp this on right here at the suction line, and then we'll do our tightness test in a couple minutes. All right, so our pressures have stabilized at 349.4. We're gonna hold the tightness test button, and then we're gonna press enter. This will start our timer, and uh, we'll give it 10 minutes and see what our pressure differential is. Hopefully our pressure differential will stay at zero or above 
If it's in the negative, then obviously we might have a little bit of a leak. All right, so we got our seal put on here. Our bulb is attached. It's not uh, moving or anything. It's got a good connection there. We got our insulation all done up here. So we're gonna zip tie this to make sure it's all good. And we are under our pressure test right now. So as soon as that passes, we'll do our vacuum and we'll be good to go. All right, so we've been at 18 minutes. We're at zero pressure differential, so we're golden. We're gonna go ahead and let our pressure out. Now what I'd like to do is uh, making it a habit of closing off of this uh, tool. Now what we're actually gonna do, instead of opening this slowly, we're gonna open this full blast and it's going to purge any contaminants out of this line. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, so we can proceed with our vacuum um, procedure. So what we're gonna do, we can take this off. We're gonna hook our micron gauge up to the high side and then we're gonna hook our true blue hose up to the half inch port of this, straight to our Schrader core tool with no Schrader core. So we'll be able to do this really fast. Okay, so we've got everything hooked up here. We're gonna power on our micron gauge. And we're gonna power this guy on. And this is a fully charged uh, eight, eight amp hour battery. As you can see, this has a slow start very quiet unit and this will run for 60 minutes on one battery and we can typically pump a system down in 10 minutes so this can be used for six different systems so this is opened up already as you can see it's 321 when we're starting this test and we'll see how quickly this will get down to where our micron gauge will start reading So it's been less than a minute and our micron gauge is reading. We are dropping rapidly. So we'll come back in about five minutes and show you where we're at. So we used our trailer for a unit replacement today and it has been so amazing. I have absolutely loved it. So we have our cooler, we've got our batteries, inverter, and as you can see, we're at 13.2. We're getting, uh, we've been getting full sunlight pretty much all day here with our solar panel. And uh, we've been able to charge our batteries. Every one of these batteries is fully charged and uh, it's been super duper awesome. All right, so as you can see, it's 333. We're at 480 right now. There was some moisture in the line, so we're not as low as we'd like just yet. We're gonna let this keep pumping down. Then we're gonna isolate and do our decay test. All we have to do to do that is isolate right here and we're gonna let it sit for five minutes. And as long as we don't rise above 500 uh, microns, we're good to go. All right, so we're at 440. This is also a great way to verify your pressure test. If you had a leak anywhere, this would not get 500 microns and pass your decay test. So you could basically replace the pressure test with this alone. And as long as you're below 500 microns and you pass that decay test, you should be good to go. So we're gonna go ahead and shut this down, turn off our pump, and we're gonna give this uh, five minutes. As long as we don't rise above 500, we can go ahead and let our refrigerant in. Now I went ahead and removed these two caps. And all we're gonna do to let the refrigerant in is we're going to open up these Allen head uh, valves in here all the way. And that what that's gonna do is allow all of this refrigerant to go from the condenser through these lines into the evaporator coil. And just so all of you know, every new condenser, whether it's a mini split or a unitary split system like this, it's going to be pre-charged with refrigerant. So the only time you'll need to add refrigerant is if your line set is longer than 15 feet 
in which case we'll we'll just add in refrigerant through the low side until we get the proper superheat or subcooling. Now this is a TXV on the evaporator coil, so we'll be checking subcooling once we get the system up and running, and we can verify our charge that way. All right, so it's been five minutes. We're still at 440 on our micron gauge. So what we're gonna do is isolate our gauge with our ball valve here, and we're just gonna open up the suction side all the way Tight. Okay, now we'll go over to the high side, same thing. And we're going to let these pressures and the refrigerant stabilize for about five more minutes, maybe 10, and then we'll hook our gauges up check our pressures and uh, if we need to we'll add refrigerant so the last thing we're going to do is put our Schrader core back in so we're just going to slide it in right here and then we're going to slide this piece tighten it down and as soon as we open this we'll see that pop meaning that there's pressure on it now and now what we're going to do is take one hand and we're going to hold it in and with the other we're going to thread it and you'll see this gap closing here and we'll feel that resistance once this uh, Schrader core has seated. Right there. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull this off of the Schrader core. We're gonna close our valve and we're going to remove this slowly. Let that pressure off. And now what we're gonna do is slowly open this to verify that our Schrader core is working. Beautiful. So now we can take this off, we can hook our gauges up and start the system up. All right, so we are wrapped up here. We just turned on the air conditioner. So we're gonna go out to the condenser and turn that on in a minute. We got our exhaust put back on. All of this is insulated all the way up. So everything is golden in here. So we're just gonna check our pressures and then this job will be done. All right, so the thermostat is calling for cooling. I'm gonna go ahead and put our disconnect in. Put our probes on and check our superheat and subcooling. We're going to let this system run for about 10 minutes and then we're going to check our superheat and subcooling. Alright, so our subcooling is uh, fluctuating from 9 to about 11 degrees of subcooling, so it's exactly where we want it. So this system is up and running great. Um, we've got a 20 degree uh, temperature differential that we'll show you inside. So it's 78 degrees in here, 68, 58, and we're putting out 55 degree air. So we're doing awesome on our temperature split and everything is working perfectly. Well guys, I hope you found this video informative, whether you are a DIYer or you're someone in the trades, I hope you learned something from this video. If you're interested in seeing another AC installation video, check out this one right here, and I'm sure you'll enjoy that one as well. Until next time, you guys be safe. Later.